Hello people, and welcome back to part 29 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for all the support on our industrial rework last episode. You guys really enjoyed this, so thank you for all the kind comments and some suggestions as well. Uh, alongside the fact I actually left in an empty pedestrian bridge that I forgot to clear out, so we've got rid of that now as well. Uh, but really cool area, lots of factories around here, plenty of industrial cargo vibes as well. And uh, I think it does go to show how far the unmodded vanilla game has come, hasn't it? Especially with the DLCs in there now too, just uh, really fantastic. We can do lots of cool things now. However, today is quite a monumental uh, moment for the city. We will be opening uh, the last tile of the nine vanilla tiles after we hit uh, the milestone last episode. So today, what I want to talk about again is how we can prepare our networks. We have some train line work to do. Uh, we also need to build a new highway interchange for which I think uh, we're going to do the vanilla diverging diamond configuration. So I will walk you through uh, how to build that and decorate it as well, of course. Then, of course, bring across all these new arterial frames that are sat empty uh, on all sides of the tile, especially over here by the farming suburb. There's plenty of networks that need to come out. And then we can finally rework uh, the cargo train line that flows through this part of the map as well. So it hooks in correctly uh, with the rest of the internal uh, rail network. Let's talk about preparing our last and final vanilla tile in City Skyline, shall we? So here we go, everyone. Big moment for the city, and we're going to pop this tile over here, and then there we go, 30 grand, and we now have access to it. So, let's have a little look around it first of all, and let's see exactly what we're working with. We can see straight away from the highway that the terrain is insane. Uh, we're going to need to re tariff on one of this in order to fit our new interchange in today. Uh, we also have access to half of a lake um, in this tile, which means we can do some lakefront builds, but again, this is horrendous uh, vanilla banking, like <laughs> all of this is going to have to be terraformed. There's no way we can work with that sort of height. But it's quite uneven. There's a little bit more fertile land out here. Also looks like, is that more oil? I'm assuming it is. Yes, there's an oil, oil pocket. But uh, yeah, plenty more builds to be had. We've also had quite a few requests for a vanilla football stadium. Uh, so we'll certainly be doing that in this tile as well. The first thing I'd like to do is destroy the highway. Okay, so all this is gonna go, just tear it all out for right now. And then we'll reconfigure in a minute. Of course, don't allow your game to play whilst you're doing this because you're going to kill one of your uh, city's ex and external connections, and that's not fun. So we can see here that we prepared during our farmland build, uh, when we worked on this a few episodes back, that we wanted uh, this layer of height to now start uh, emanating out, which is going to give us uh, some nice layers to work with an interchange today. So I'm going to push all of this out now. Let's buy more soil as and when we need it. And fantastic. Wonderful. Okay, we also need to allow the highways to come through here too. So again, let's go ahead and pick out a new level terrain height. Now we do want a little bit of depth here because we're going to be doing a diverging diamond interchange. And that needs a little bit of height for it to look nice as well. You can do it in a smaller space, but it doesn't look as good. So let's come up to our slope tool now. We're going to grab the height that the highways are currently sat on. And then we'll go from here. And then we just want to slope all this up right to those highways, and then fantastic. So also trim this back as well, give ourselves a little bit more room on this flat space. So things we've done in the noobs guide before, right, just chiseling out a little gully or valley for our networks to sit in, uh, makes them look a lot more prepared and planned. Right, wonderful. So nice big straight angle snap now with this highway, bring it out further than we need to, of course we can always trim it back uh, once we know exactly how much room we have to play with. And I'm also going to do the same thing on this side because I can see here that these highways are not straight. Yeah, you see how on the angle snap it's coming in together because it's not quite aligned. So we're going to align it from this side instead. And we're going to leave uh, two road snap points in between. And then we'll bring that up and then just come onto a tiny freeform tool. And then you won't be able to really tell that that bend is there. Superb. Wonderful. So now we need to prepare our layers. Let's come ahead and push these up a little bit. And then we also want the same layer or the same height on this side as well. So we're gonna terraform it out. Very similar vibes to what we did when we built the stack interchange ages ago. This was like episode four or something, wasn't it? Maybe episode five. So you see how we prepared the layer, the bottom layer? Exactly the same process here. So hopefully now as you're this far into the noobs guide, if you are indeed a noob following along or using this series as it's intended to be a tutorial build, then you're getting more familiar with all these processes now and uh, even starting to put your own spin on them as well. Super. So let's go ahead and extend this road. This is a content creator road. I'm going to bring this out and we know that this can be one of our connections. 
Okay, so now let's talk about how we build a vanilla diverging diamond interchange. Uh, so I have a recessed highway here, all right? The slopes up the sides aren't too high. If you want the exact contour lines, it's about maybe about 10 contour lines of terraform is what I've used here. And we're going to come into a one-way road. Okay, just a regular vanilla one. You can use the industrial ones if you like. They're slightly more industrial, if you like, in their aesthetic. But I'm just going to go with the regular. So we're going to draw this down into the highway itself, straight across the other side. And then straight over there as well. The reason why we're doing this is because I want to use the grid snappings here. So we're now going to come off road guideline and road length snapping. I only want the grid. And then we're going to elevate up by three steps. Okay, I'm going to have this come straight across to the other one. And then exactly the same on the other side. And now we can delete these frames because we know that we're snapped into the grid. And everyone is tremendously happy. Super. So now you've got two one-way rows flowing over the highway that are perfectly parallel. And perfectly spaced. Now we're going to come back onto road length snapping and then we're going to bring these bridges down either side by a distance of 740. Same process over this side as well. Back down to earth and again the same thing on this side as well. And of course just arrange your directions to flow with your right or left hand traffic whichever you're playing with here. And that's going to give you something that looks a little bit like that. Want a road guideline snapping now with a freeform tool. And then we're going to bring this up and then hook into this one. Exactly the same thing on the other side. So it hooks in at a distance of 400. Again, arranging configurations. We will come back and talk about how a diverging diamond works here in a second, but just, just give it time for right now. So what we're going to do now to make sure we snap onto this same angle here is just do what we did earlier. Just draw a frame across. Snapping to angles, which is really important. Make sure that is snapped into the angle. There we go. And then bring it straight up. On a 90 degree point, and then we can see this one here was a cost of 360. So we know that that is where um, our arterial road will flow from. So we can just align that up now. This can come up this space here, and whatever lies over here in future builds will lie over there. We just want to make sure now that we have that same cost, which I believe was 400, right? If we go from there to there, yep, 400. There we go. That's exactly what we want to happen. Splendid. Cool. And then we can delete these hoarding frames now, which just make sure everyone's happy and aligned. And now we have something that looks a little bit like this, all right? So now let's talk about the slip lanes here. So off of the nodes where the one-way road connects, we're going to come out with a distance or with an angle of 44 degrees, again, making sure angle is snapped on. Then we'll do a distance of 1400 every time, and then just hook these in for right now. We're going to straighten out and beautify these slip roads in a minute, but we really just want this initial connection. Okay, same thing again over this side, snap to uh, 44 degrees, 1400, and then just hook it in. Same thing again on this side, 1400, and then just find a connection. And then over here again as well. So we can start to see that diamond pattern take shape now, can't we? So what I want to do now with these nodes where the bridges land back on the ground is we want to create a one-way connection into these. And I'm going to go for... A angle of 63 or a cost of 440 into each side. We can replicate that over here. 64 degrees there, but that's fine. It's the same cost. You won't be able to tell at that one degree difference. 63 over here again too. And then 63 and 440 over this side. So now your configuration should look something like this. All right. Ignore the slip lanes. We are going to tidy these up. The slip lanes are really there just to help configure the diamond pattern here. Okay. Wonderful. So now let's talk about the configuration and flow of a diverging diamond interchange. So the diverging diamond interchange it is a diamond interchange that diverges onto the other side of the road. So you can see here I am playing in a right hand drive traffic city. I now want these lanes to come back in the opposite way. So the traffic uh, crosses over. Same thing over this side again as well. And yes, these are already configured the same way. Like this one here has to be the opposite way, of course. Bring it in and flow it in. So just use your highway to, you know, decide which ways uh, the roads are coming in. Uh, and then this one is also configured correctly as well. So if you're looking for the directional flow arrows here, uh, this is what you're looking to configure uh, within the middle. Right? You can pause the video here and have a little look at that uh, sort of configuration of direction, if you like. Wonderful. So that's going to be uh, the initial frames. Now we actually want to snap off. Uh, these guys here and then we'll do some nicer things with the slip roads because this looks horrendous at the minute 
we are playing with the Road Anarchy mods, uh, the no road bending functionality of those mods massively helps here, but we are not. So now we're going to come back into our slope tools, we're going to right click the height where this node starts, and then I just want to create some nice gentle slopes up to those spaces. The slope will be more severe of course depending at what side you're starting from, and how horrendous your terrain is. Do exactly the same thing again over here. Make sure we get a nice slope up to that road. And then over here again as well. Make sure we get that new height actually. And there we go. Splendid. So now we can do some nice things. Uh, we actually go, want to go ahead and make sure that we uh, hook the highway back in of course because uh, we need to know exactly how much room we have to play with with these slip ramps. So I'm just going to bring in some nice big reform curves here and then come onto that road guy line of the initial highway and then connect that back in. Not at that angle, that's a little bit too harsh. Let's go for a curve instead there. Yep, so hit that first guideline and there's our curve. Repeat exactly the same thing this side. We want to hit that guideline with the freeform. Find the matching marker, which is about there by the looks of it. No, it's not a little bit sooner than that, wasn't it? So yeah, hit this guideline and then bring it up to this one. And the same thing again, curve tool. Find the guideline of the highway you're hooking into. And then everyone's happy. And then just configure the directions back around. That's going to give us a slightly more interesting highway pattern as well. Okay, it was kind of all over the place now, but we've got a little sort of S bend in it. And then it comes down to a big straight section where we've got lots of detail opportunities here now and then it heads back uphill and then of course into the rest of Newby Oak. So now I'm going to grab some uh, highway ramps here and I'm going to draw each one down by 600. Same on all sides and then we can, again this is where your build will differ now as to whether or not you want to you know just hook them straight in or your highway might veer off to the right here which means the slip ramp might be slightly more curved very much the same process as like, you know, how much room do you have to play with on this interchange, you know, can you give it a little bit more breathing room away from this slip ramp or does it need more, you know, this is where your slip ramps will differ, it depends on the map, depends what terrain you have, and depends on the shape of your highway. Okay, but there is a couple of things we can do to sort of beautify this up a little bit. I'm going to snap onto a road guideline um, snap point of the highway, just so I can align the uh, slip ramp first of all, by... 150 and then from these two points now we can come onto the road guideline with a curve tool and then we can hook them in okay and this is going to give you very symmetrical slip ramps if that's what you're about and of course once they're in you can just hook them in with a distance of 270 there we go and of course directions to be configured and there we go so it's a slightly nicer way of doing your highway ramps if you want to do it like that it's really up to you everyone's preference is different if you prefer the very harsh sharp exit then go for that or you can sort of pre-measure, pre-draw, and then hook everything in with road guidelines if you want the sort of curvy vibe toward it. All right, we'll do the same thing again this side. 150, and then 150. Get that curve tool on the snap point, and then hook it in. And then just find a place where you can get it in. It'd be nice if we could replicate that 270 curve here. But yeah, so you see how we can't get 270, but I can do 240. That's fine. I'm not going to notice that difference in the grand scheme of things. And then I can hook that in there as well. Fantastic. So if you're concerned about lane mathematics, uh, at this point it will be a time to upgrade your central highways into two lanes if you're playing with the Mass Transit DLC. Of course, what this is going to do is force the dedicated turning lane as they come off the highway. Likewise, you can also go down from like four to three lane if you are playing with four lane highways everywhere. Okay, so there we go. We now have a two lane highway through the middle, which is going to force uh, dedicated turning lanes at each of the exit points here. And then one last glance over your build here, okay? If you're happy with all the directions, make sure everyone's flowing in. Make sure that your diverging setup is, of course, configured correctly. And then after this, we should have uh, quite a nice time. We can let the game uh, play now and then see how things pan out. So we'll pop the game on three speed. And then just enjoy how people move around these diverging diamonds. They're very, very fun to watch. So with a little bit of terraforming, a little bit of pre-measuring with some grid frames like we did with these central roads. It's going to work quite nicely. It's a little bit different, it's a lot different to our stack interchange of course. But you know this is extending out of the highway. It's, an, it's another version of your service interchange, right? This is the 
the dog bone or the dumbbell, whatever you want to call this variation. It's uh, we've now got a diverging diamond in the city as well. All right, wonderful. So you can see how the traffic crosses over here. So it just it moves the left turn over to the other side of the road sooner. Apparently, when I first saw these designs, I was like, that looks insanely dangerous. <laughs> but, um, you know, according to city planners and road engineers, uh, diverging diamonds are actually quite safe. So you can just sit and enjoy this move around now. Really quite fun. Lots of fun to piece together these sorts of builds. And of course, there's plenty of detailing that can be done here during our detail and time-lapse, of course, but we'll save that uh, for the detail and time-lapse, if not just have a, a cheeky preview. Why don't we go for some date palms? Uh, we'll come on to our prop line tool with perhaps a uh, 25 meter distance. Quite keep your distance is quite large here. If you go quite short, it can almost be you know too spicy with the trees. So I'm going to align this as to where my slip roads exit off. Yep, and then have this coming all the way through and then up to there. See, we missed one in the middle. So why don't we alternate that tree? Why don't we go for a California palm instead? All right. Love road network detailing. <laughs> Makes it uh, really fun. Really do enjoy these things. Okay. And then feel free as well to add in support slip lanes off of this. You know, I've got this little asymmetrical number down here. Maybe if I want to provide a secondary connection, I can, you know, bring off another slip ramp off of this one. As long as the core diverging diamond remains the same. You know, a little slip ramp off of here. If you're happy with the angleage, you can maybe... You know, treat it as a frontage network. That comes alongside your arterial, and then you know, we'll kind of put it into practice and see what we think of it. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the slope here, and then we'll get a slope up uh, toward that road. If we can help that. There we go. And then, don't do that. Let's get a freeform tool instead. And this can come down now, and then just hook in. And you've just got a little support system there that drops them onto another network below. You know, not everything has to be so rigid and fixed as to how you see it in Google Earth or on YouTube videos. It's all open to your own interpretation. Okay. But it's an example. I'm not going to do this for mine. But it's just sort of, you know, showing the uh, process in practice. Cool. So, we've now got a vanilla diverging diamond interchange. Let's go and analyze all our existing networks on the uh, old tile boundary here. And then also finally rework this hideous train connection that's been here for months. Um, and then we'll see what we can do. Okay, everyone. So we now have our diverging diamond interchange. Um, it's time to get quite spicy with the layers now. Uh, so this is going to really be a lesson in how we can do so much more interesting things with our rails and our roads and bridges. Uh, really cool. Got some nice ideas in store today. So we're going to come into transport, we're going to go ahead and grab one of our content creator roads and I'm looking to grab the high speed rail viaduct. And then we're going to come down to an elevation step, uh, lowest elevation step. And then no road guideline here either because that the other networks will mess with us. We're going to come up to a three step elevation and then I want to prepare uh, how and where the rail is going to cross over the highway. That's going to be good for me. So once you have your bridge established, we're going to come into our terraforming tools. And then we're going to bring up and judge it as best we can. A little elevated mound for the rail to come back down onto now. So if you want to keep it as a rail bridge, you can. But eh, I think it looks better if you do it like this. Okay, That's going to be wonderful there. Let's also do the same thing on this side again as well. Okay, let's keep a couple of gentle left clicks of uh, shift terrain. And then once you're at a sensible height where you think, yeah, that looks good. Come back into your level and then give yourself a nice flat platform to work with. It's going to be grand for me. Come back into the roads now and then we're going to bring uh, this back down. There we go. Same thing again this side. Bring it back down to earth and then it can flow off and go over there. That's actually not very good. So we can just see there we're just a little bit too high from where the bridge is. So let's grab the next contour lines down and then just prepare that to hold the bridge. That should be a little bit more sensible, hopefully. There we go. And then back onto the earth. I'm fantastic. So, we can now break this cargo line that we prepared against the tower boundary, because it is no longer needed. I am also going to get rid of 
all of these initial frames and the residential. Don't need it anymore. We've hit the uh, population threshold now to get the last tile in vanilla. So I'm no longer bothered about the population here. We'll just relocate it into another build uh, eventually. At this road, we'll now also break as will the rail line up to a certain point. Probably to about there is going to be good. I'm going to come into our slope terrain. And then we're going to click the height where the rail lands. And then from this point now, we just want to create a nice gentle slope that comes up from where the rail is at the minute. And then we can see what we're going to do here now. Come back in and grab the rail line. Let's bring this one down a little bit further. And then with our road guideline snapping on and our curve tool, we're going to get a nice sensible happy curve and feed that up into there. Right, so that's our cargo line reconnected now, but this time it's going to cross uh, over the highway itself, which is one layer that we're working with today. Fantastic. That's also forest brush away. Uh, this very heavy noobs guide forest that we painted in a long, long time ago now when we did the uh, Baba Fett uh, Green Cities Bowl over here. Very long time ago now. Wonderful. Cool. So let's go ahead and find a place to hook this in. Uh, I'm just going to align with a road guideline of the main rail. Uh, this seems about appropriate for me. Get a connection in. Let's actually make sure we terraform this one first. There is going to be another layer that comes into play at this height, but it's not quite ready to be brought in yet. So we'll just draw it in uh, flat along the ground for right now. Yeah, let's just keep it going straight. This will give us quite a cool aesthetic to have such a straight rail line. It gives us a new network to plan some builds around. Super. So we now have an appropriate connection for our cargo line that feeds the farm and uh, the ore area. So that's that problem fixed. We've been having that one for a while. Uh, next thing that comes in now is, uh, you will remember, many, many moons ago, uh, we did a passenger line here. Okay, so this is our passenger terminal. Uh, this now needs to come out. So this bridge is going to disappear, as is the pathway and the fencing that we use to detail it. And again, we want to make sure that we're preparing our terrains as best as possible, first of all. So I'm going to right-click the height that the rail is on. And then all this is going to push up now. Okay, just like that. That's super. And I'm going to break the highway here, uh, right the way up to these slip words. And then we can see now where a new layer is going to develop. So just keeping an eye out as you're constantly building and expanding your infrastructure for little layers like this are going to add so much more interest to your builds than just having everything on the same layer or maybe just respecting a little bit of a slope. And um, we can do some really cool things with them. Okay, so this is where I want that next uh, train layer to come in from. So I'm going to cut through this area. Terraform it all out. And we can come back into our train line. Uh, grab that high speed rail network again. You can use the regular vanilla uh, train bridges if you like. It's really kind of personal preference. But uh, I think it'd be nice to use the high speed rail viaduct for a change. And then we can have that there. Again, we can just see where we're perhaps maybe. Yeah, it wants an extra elevation step there, doesn't it? Let's uh, redo that one again. Come up. There we go. That's a little bit more sensible. And then back down. Then we can grab this line now. So our passenger uh, train network that can now come into play. Let's do a little bit more terraform work here. Touch more breathing room. And then we're going to grab this curve here. And then we'll let this run underneath this one. And eventually we will hook in a temporary train station today just so we can see this line getting use in the cinematics. But already we're starting to see many, many more spices and layers develop, aren't we? We're coming up to uh, smoked paprika, I think, at this stage. Right, but things are about to possibly move up to KN as well. So now I want to prepare these highway bridges to come back over, but there's also a fair amount of nasty work that's going on over here with this train line. And also, you know, this is what I say all the time, but I'll say it again. You know, don't be afraid to rip out existing infrastructure. Just because you've already built it doesn't mean it can't be changed. Um, you know, especially when you're unlocking new tile boundaries like this and networks have a lot more flexibility because we're not forced against that network or that tile edge anymore. Cool. So we move the curve here. And then we're going to plan out what's going to happen with the highways. So back into level terrain. And then we're going to grab the height of the highways and then create that gully again for them to flow through. 
And we can see we're already getting that natural embankment now, which is going to help bring the rail over this highway again. Okay, but what I do want to do first, actually, is make sure we have enough flat room at either side of the rail line uh, to terraform this out and get the pillars in. Okay, yeah, so just push it all out. Don't worry about it for right now. Fantastic. So I'm going to come into roads and then to content creator roads. And there's a road here I've never ever used before. And this is a three lane highway viaduct. So it's the same as a elevated uh, highway bridge here, but it's got a slightly different aesthetic to it. It doesn't travel any faster, but it's still really nice looking. Okay. And then I want to set to a road guideline here. And then we're going to elevate up by three points again, so we can clear the rail beneath. And we're going to come across by 1300. I'm going to repeat that same thing again on this side. I'm going to come across here and then by 1300. And we know now that we can just meet back down with at these land masses over here. Maybe at a cost of 1820. Again, we can just see, you see it's just ever so slightly embanked. So that means we can just trim off another contour line off of that terraforming layer. I'd rather the bridges sink down than go back up again. Um, if you're playing with Move It or Anarchy Tools, you don't need to bother with this, but right, welcome to Vanilla Gameplay. And then we'll do a bridge of 1820. That seems like it's going to be sensible for me. Do it on that side there. And hopefully here now, this should just be a cute connection of 1840 back into the highways. A little bit of something like that. Okay, so we've got a slight dip here as we come down. And then we arrive back at these heights. Uh, over here. And then of course don't forget to uh, reconfigure your directions so your highways don't die. And again we've now introduced two more layers into our road network haven't we? We've got the bridge going over and then the highways sort of swooping down now into the new valley. Okay you could also slope the terrain here from the slip ramps down to the bridges if you like. Might do that during the detail and time lapse but for right now uh, I'm really worrying about frames. Splendid. This is great. Do a bit more terraforming work now. Come back onto our larger one. And then I want to flatten all of this out uh, so we can prepare uh, those train lines to come back over. And then we'll do some slope work here to hook all this stuff back in. So, same process again that we did with this highway or this rail bridge. We're going to come on to uh, our guideline here. Although this one will be uh, most appropriate. So yes, we'll use this one. And then we'll have this as the height where the rail will cross. This should be relatively acceptable. Again, we'll prepare more terraforming work than we need. So yeah, let's go ahead and grab this one here. We'll go up by three steps. Come across the highway. Let me know now that this can be terraformed up against the rail line. Cool. This can be pushed back a little bit. And then we can slope this one out to here. And those rail lines can now be uh, hooked back in. So we've got a much sensible ascent up to the bridge now. Uh, same process, again with our uh, shift terrain. To find a height where we're happy uh, to come back down here. You could also grab the height uh, with level terrain here as well. And just push that up, which is basically the same one we landed at. Okay. And then more obvious terraforming work. Okay, Give your sort of work room to breathe. Don't think, you know, I've got to get the terraforming spot on first time. And then, you know, just get... Give yourself a moment to breathe. It's made life a lot easier. Now we can do a real grand slope. So I probably will get the train, please, coming after me for this one. Um, train and gradient, please, both at one time, God forbid. Uh, but we just want to do a nice big slope up here now, okay? Slope all this out. We can see new layers starting to develop. We're going to come back into our one-way train roads that we've done, of course, if you're not using the little one-way configuration here. Uh, then you don't need to worry so much about it. But again, it's more layers of depth, isn't it? So everyone can come back in now. Uh, this one can come back up, get a little freeform tour, come back in. And we've now got this really large, sort of, you know, quite girthy rail network that now comes up and down. Very cool. We also need to reinstate this bridge today as well, which we will do. Already, what a difference, right? What a wonderful, wonderful difference this has made. Just to how everything sits and how everything looks. Just uh, I hope you agree it's a lot more interesting. Of course, it all wants detailing. Um, where we do have some rather harsh terrain work, uh, our softened friend will be uh, most welcome. 
around here, okay? I'm just going to take a little bit of the sting out of the brown. And there we go. Cool. So, again, considering asset orientations, um, although we're not really doing an industrial build today, I would like to have a fat chunk of industry um, as part of the build, if that makes sense. So I think what I'm going to do is break these highway roads here for a hot minute. I'm going to slope them down, so we're going to grab this height here. And then from here, we're just going to slope this out. There we go. Superb. Grab these back in. Super, so that's a lot more even now. But what we'd like to do is prepare um, a chunk of industry to sit in as part of my highway decoration, a part of my detailing here today. Uh, I want to have a factory alongside the this very large, you know, important infrastructure. I'm very much considering it part of the build as opposed to kind of a separate um, industry or factory build, if you like. So let's go ahead and grab some industrial road. Again, we'll keep it in at relative themes. And there's an opportunity here where we can just have this flow under. Hopefully we can clear those pillars. Um, if not, we can just slightly rework them or perhaps spin it off a little bit sooner. What I would like to happen here is to have uh, the soft paper factory uh, to decorate my highway. I'm going to place it in here. I think I'm happy with that. But what a wonderful drive-by that gives us, right? Now you've got this really chunky infrastructure. There's a logo facing the highway, which is where you imagine... You know, the company that owns the factory would have it. It's free advertising, basically. Really chunky infrastructure, right? It sits in as, from whatever angle you look at it. It's very, very cool. Super happy with that. Tremendous. So, let's carry on balking out those industrial vibes. Uh, we're going to have to stock uh, the soft paper factory, of course, which needs crops, paper, petroleum, and plastic. That's plenty. Thankfully, we are producing all four of those. Uh, so coming to warehouses, I'm going to grab a large warehouse and we're going to have this right next door. Let's come back in now and start mapping out some uh, industrial road frames that can hold uh, all of these buildings. And again, it's all going to help serve as highway decoration. You know, you don't have to make a dedicated industrial area for every single factory that you have in your city. You know, sometimes just using them for network decoration can be uh, most welcome as well. So I'm going to draw this one in behind and then flip this warehouse around. And then you'll notice what this does is it kind of fuses the two warehouses together when we leave or get them as close as possible like that. And you'll see from certain angles now, it looks like one larger massive warehouse and industrial complex, doesn't it? And when you factor in the view from all the highway networks here, it just makes an enormous difference. At, uh, you know, it's just cool, <laughs> especially considering this is vanilla. You know, we've got no mods here, there's no move it, we're not using assets together. Oh, there's no anarchy, we're just being respectful of road network frames against you know, new important road layers like this, and I hope you can see the difference that it makes. Wonderful, so things are slowly coming along. Uh, you are going to want to store, it was paper you wanted, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, and then petroleum. And you want plastic as well, that's absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and find another uh, spot for a warehouse. Probably get a medium one in alongside or behind, actually, I imagine. Yeah, that's superb. Uh, already forgotten what you want. Petroleum. Nope, stock in that. Paper and plastic is what we want. Super. Fantastic. And then you also want crops as well, for which we'll need uh, a silo for that. So we can squeeze it in there. That is a happy accident. That was not planned. That just happens to fit in perfectly. <laughs> so I think we'll go for that one. Amazing, cool. So the factory now has all its resources within the same road network frame nearby. And again, there's more detailing to be had here. And we've got this as well. You know, parallel road and rail action in city skylines vanilla is very satisfying. Especially once we've got passenger lines coming and going along this side as well. Awesome. Great news, everyone. So now let's return to the road networks. Uh, so I'd like to upgrade some of the roads here into six lane. Uh, so I'm going to go for the European road because it's slightly nicer or we could go for american no we have the european one i prefer the tiles but this is going to force a dedicated turning lane uh, to the right exit of the diverging diamond also want to do the same thing over here again as well and then what we will do is move into uh, a fancy road so we can do some um 
sort of nice stuff with trees down this down this area. We'll have a look at that in a minute though. So now just have a look at your existing uh, road boundaries here once I've watered uh, the soft paper number. And it's adjacent warehouses. Yeah, so just have a look at existing frames. You know, I've got one here. There is um, a frame that can be expanded out, so I'm going to do that. Let's go ahead and grab uh, that industrial road, or just regular road here. So this area here is going to be too tight against the highway, but that should be okay. Let's also remove this noob's guide forest. And then this can now come out, and we'll use this as a new sort of main uh, sort of system through the area. Then we'll bring this up, and then we know we're going to do something sort of lake orientated at some point over this side. Uh, so actually, what we might do here, yes, it's worth pre-planning this, because we're going to do a lot of terraforming against this lake front we might as well do it now because otherwise whatever road networks we're going to have to lay down will at some point later on be affected by that terraforming so let's chisel out a layer of the lake that we're happy to have once we come to work on the lake i think that's a lot more realistic isn't it we can do some much nicer things with that height as opposed to this one then it's just a case of chiseling it out right let's go ahead and bring it down here let's see exactly how close we are to that road. It actually looks like we're really not far away from it, are we? Yes, okay. That can certainly be sloped up. That's no problem at all. Right, let's sell the soil. Right, keep chiseling it all out. All over here as well. Of course, you know, we're still playing with messy terrain. It's still uneven and interesting. Very highly decoratable as well. But it's just a little bit more workable. You know, it's not quite as intense. Okay, so we can slow pull this out as well. Let's remove this road over here. Uh, again, and we can see it's actually climbing up, isn't it? So we might as well just remove this section here. And then again, just do that terrain work. We'll probably find it's a much more easier gradient to bring in as well here when we're chiseling out these layers. And we're also generating some new peaks as well. You know, there's a little hill here now. Very much like we did with our nature reserve build over here. You know, we chiseled it out and then built around it. So... Don't be afraid to attack your terrain's beliefs and values, everyone. That's the take-home lesson from today, I think. Right, and there we go. So let's bring that big treed road back up the middle now. And then we will go for a roundabout here. And then. Upgrade, everyone. Of course, we can now span off some lakefront builds over here with these road connections. And do let me know what you think we should build on the lake as well. Um... Tempted to stay away from kind of the traditional nightlife, leisure, tourism, green city stuff, but if you have any sort of cool uh, waterfront builds in mind that you'd like to see as part of Noob's Guide, let me know. Right, so let's bring this down now, start connecting these in together, and then we'll just see where we get a road guideline stack with a curve. And then there we go, super. So now much more interconnectivity. Uh, for the city here, this one is going to have to be amended because you're now just being relatively awkward. You can come in here. That's going to be fine. It's not like it's a majorly busy road anyway. Uh, that little elevated bridge. If we had that extra tile, but we, we will eventually because we're going to bring 25 tiles into Nubio too. So we can work with that at some point, but not to the too distant future yet. All right. Well, there we go. So I'd be really interested to see now. Here we go. Here's the first vehicle taking this out so it's an intercity bus okay so he's come from this station over here because this is the only one over this side you know and rather than forcing his way back through the stack interchange now and the toll booths and all this infrastructure he's now got a faster connection um, according to his ai let's see where he's going yeah so he's leaving the city right yeah transporting passengers out so more highway interconnectivity Hopefully we'll see someone come off this ramp here as well. He's going to take the exit here. There he goes, and then back onto the highway. Wonderful. So, you know, all this infrastructure that we're laying up today, especially the Diverging Diamond, is going to take a lot of pressure off of all this stuff over here as well. So that's something to remember when you're sort of expanding like this. Wonderful. Yes, yeah, so we've got all our layers going across now. There we go. Two trains coming over all this new highway infrastructure. Very satisfying, everyone. <laughs> Very satisfying episode to put together today. Okay. Fantastic news. Right. 
So let's analyze some further connections. So of course these ones here are pretty simple expansions. You can just come up. You will eventually hook into things over this side. Uh, likewise with you, we want to make sure we extend this one. Looks like this one's cycling, so we'll bring this one up too. Awesome. And then we do have a bridge or a tunnel under here, and I would like to do something with this. So let's do some more terraforming work to prepare that tunnel to come out. This height here looks like it might be appropriate. Just keep sowing soil as and when we need it. And we can also use this as an excuse to hook in with... Uh, the road that's going to run through this area as well. So let's terraform out this gully where the train line is starting to meet up with the new terraform layers. Okay, keep pushing it out. We will come to slope this in a minute, but let's just get everything on the same playing field. There we go. And then we're going to come ahead and grab this bridge. Let's come underground. Uh, we need to delete a little bit of it. Seems good. Uh, we'll grab ourselves a curve tool. We're going to come on a 10 curve with no road guideline here. There we go, and then we can tunnel under uh, the interchange. And then once we come back to our layer, we can bring this back up and out. Then we can have this in. We'll also bring the train line through as well. So we're going to keep this parallel industrial road and train line going, at least as it comes under the bridge. Uh, we do want a road guideline snap for this. Okay, so we'll hook that in a second. Might just need to ever so slightly rejig the pillars, but that's fine. I'll do that on the detail and time lapse. And then we can bring this forward. Might even be able to connect this uh, together. Let's go ahead and grab the road. Straighten like that. And then we can just use that area where the two roads meet for them to meet back in with the main arterial that heads back to the highways. And then we've now linked in some areas, okay? So it's all quicker access for everyone. You know, they don't have to force their way through the Virgin Diamond if they don't need to. They can come down here and hook into these bottom layers, which connects to these, which won't be hooked into the highway. So all those roads that we've drawn in, where all those dead ends sort of connect and meet together, uh, can now just be brought in to tie it all together and, you know, just prepare your final tile for expansion. Now we've got all the roads unlocked. We've got like, what, 13 million in the bank, making loads of money. And, you know, when we, we were opening the first tiles, like way back when we started the city here, you know, we didn't have all that. We had to be quite sparing with the expansion. And, you know, we didn't have all the money. Not all the roads were available to us. So, you know, come the end game now, when you're filling the last tile, you've got so many more options available. Uh, yeah, I just hope you can see the difference in it, and it makes. Uh, but otherwise, guys, that does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse. And um, there's not too much work to do today until we get into some builds. Uh, definitely going to do some football stadium stuff over here. And um, the the city only has one stadium at the minute, um, which is in the campus area. So, and it's the smallest stadium too. So we definitely need to get some more kind of like sports and wreck in the city. So definitely thinking again, you could even do this, replace your factory with a stadium if you want, you know, just to have a chunky bit of highway infrastructure. I prefer the factories, but a stadium would equally work like, as well here. But so, yeah, I definitely have a stadium building. But in terms of detailing, I'm going to bring some rocks against this. Uh, dirt mound here and then lots of fence detail around the interchange some repeated bush patterns within the diamonds and Just sort of make it all look pretty and fancy like we normally do uh, Come ahead with uh, soften and just sort of soften all of this landscape out here So it's not as brown and as severe and looks a little bit more like the interchange landscapes uh, in the diamond in the divergent diamond interchange uh, Lots of fence work up against the rail bringing things where it's snapped uh, and then also reinstate this bridge uh, over here as well, because I have actually broken this one, alongside any pedestrian bridges that have also been broken. Then you have to generally tie it together, make it look nice and fancy, uh, bring some nice natural forest back in, uh, and then we can enjoy the fruits of our labour uh, as we've come to expand our highways, rails, and a new interchange uh, to help prepare our last tile for its builds. So, let's detail up our new networks, and then we'll be right back. <laughs>
Okay guys, so let's have a detailing review, shall we? A bunch has changed here, so we decorated up the entire interchange uh, with lots of our favourite themes, including fencing, uh, repeated rock patterns, lots of overgrowth, and uh, general content creator tree growth is always welcome. Of course, when we detail on larger spaces like this. I've also surrounded in a very spicy tree move um, to surround the opposite side of the interchange with a very thick pine forest. And what I want to do here as we move into this side of the map is create a more rural theme. And this very thick forest really helps us create a sense of scale, I think. You know, from whatever angle you look across the motorways now and all the networks that flow under it, it looks large, you know, and I think this forest has really helped with that. Uh, on the train lines, I have replaced these with the uh, one-way content creator bridges because I still haven't found an excuse to use them. And here we go, right? <laughs> what a perfect excuse uh, to use these content creator bridges for the train lines. So really happy with that. I've also upgraded uh, the roads into this road here, which again, I always forget about. Uh, the three-lane uh, viaduct has a much nicer concrete texture on it. Uh, it just looks a lot cooler for a highway bridge, so we brought these in here too. And then again, this sort of parallel road here with the rail line gives us a real heavy country vibe, doesn't it? And then of course, we've got the rail line coming across here now, which uh, looks really cool when we catch it at the right angle. You know, how great is that? What wonderful layers of height coming into play now, and then the train disappears back into the forest. Super happy with it, just came off so nicely. Uh, and then this now comes up to link up with the arterial that goes back into the Diverging Diamond, where we've got some tasteful commercial, uh, including a petrol station and a little diner. Uh, I've also dropped in the American Football Stadium, uh, just so we can get a sense of what the stadium will be like once it's placed in. But of course, this will be its own episode as we develop uh, a sports complex uh, for this side of the highway. But just so we can see our cinematics today, lovely stuff, right? <laughs> Uh, around the interchange, we've dropped in some random assets, including uh, the weather radar from the Natural Disasters DLC. Uh, it's fitting quite nicely. It's like a little hut out here. Just happy to have it in the interchange. Then also uh, a water tower. Uh, and then placed in some general service assets like we've done a million times before. Uh, a road maintenance building partnered with a waste transfer facility just to help service the garbage need in this map. And then again, lots of that thick pine forest around the rail line as it passes by uh, the factory over here now. It just come together really nicely. A little bit of sort of industrial overgrowth detailing down here as well. I also added in yet another uh, cargo train station here, which is really just keeping the city fed with so much cargo distribution. Um, having all of these cargo uh, train terminals just split across the city. We've got so many of them now. Of course, we've got this configuration over here from last episode as well. So everyone's just saying really nicely imported and exported. They've not got to travel from miles and miles away in order to get to one of these export and import stations. So really happy with that. It also dropped in some zoning as well, and that is the asset I want. Let's historicalize that before it goes. Again, just as a little bit of admin to sit within the industrial area. Likewise with the clown building as well. And I do like the sort of back end of the clown building here from as part of the interchange detailing. So I'm going to stick with that one. It also upgraded the middle lanes on the diverging diamond interchange into those same elevated highway roads. Which again, for vanilla, just this little concrete bridge texture is so much nicer than the vanilla one. So, again, we're just going to run with that. It's a lot nicer. And then again, some lay mathematics here. Uh, the exit roads onto the Diverging Diamond are now uh, one-way highway roads, uh, which forces a dedicated turning lane uh, off of the Diverged Road. So, really cool. Came together super nicely. Possibly my favourite uh, intersection that we put together on the channel. Just, uh... It has such a sense of scale, you know, and that's what I really wanted to kind of nail home in today's episode is, you know, we're moving a little bit more rural now in this part of the town in our last tile. And you know, all of these large assets positioned around the large infrastructure really gives us that impression of distance. And I'm super, super happy with it. And you can just about see the downtown from over here as well. And um, if you were actually driving on the Diverging Diamond, oh, there we go. Yes, please. <laughs> Ladies of height, everyone. Goodness gracious. So yeah, if you were driving into New York, your first glimpse of the downtown would be as you come over the bridges. And then you sort of look down into this industrial area that has the passenger lines passing through it. And then off into the distant skyline. It's uh, Yeah, it's really wonderful. Super, super amazingly happy with it. Uh, also got a little dirt access road in here too. Uh, back over towards the factories. And that feeds into the Green Cities District here. 
I was super happy with. Also brought in those decorative power lines as well. Again, which helps us create a sense of distance, doesn't it? When you see those big power lines running for miles alongside uh, your major highway networks. Also just drawn in some general suburbia road frame here, just so as we get those residential spikes, we can start to paint out a new suburb that's going to sit near the highway. And then also uh, a cheeky little slip lane here in the suburb uh, that just joins in a one directional slip ramp uh, back off and out of the map, which is siphoning a little bit of traffic. And again, same thing over here as well with a little intercity configuration with some tasteful commercial, uh, a nice little curvy uh, elevated zoo path, which goes through the noobs guide forest. And super cool. So yeah, so I wanted to go with the pines uh, just to create, you know, it's like a different part of the of the country, a different part of the city. And uh, the you no know, flora over here is different. Hard to achieve in nine tiles, but I think we can do something with this idea as we move forward into this part of the map. So yeah, it should be really fun. A really cool network expansion today. Very happy with how we've decided to move into that next tile. And uh, it's looking a lot more cohesive and fleshed out and uh, well interconnected now, isn't it? However, guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, likes, comments, and shares below really do help me out equally as much. If you haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. Uh, I hope today you've managed to pick up some ideas on how we can work with a new type of interchange that we haven't looked at in the Noobs Guide yet. Uh, this is a really fun service interchange to put together the Diverging Diamond. And once it's detailed and got stuff around it, it looks quite impressive. Uh, a lot more impressive than the dog bones and the dumbbells and the little slip systems that we've been using so far. Lots of detailing ideas here today. Um, orientation of enormous factory assets really hammers home the distance vibes here. So consider some of those as well, alongside little country back roads and slip roads that can feed people uh, back and to from different areas. But let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments. Uh, thanks for all supporting the Noobs Guide. You guys are really enjoying Noob Yoke and I'm, I'm really enjoying putting it together. A really fun vanilla city to build, playing with this sort of terrain and in this sort of theme. Uh, yeah, just really, really enjoying it. Please do hang around for some cinematics. Uh, this place will look really cool and sort of all sparkly and lit up at night. Really looking forward to it, especially with all these layers as well. Otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.